What up Sparky, it's your boy Evan here, and I have a question for you. Have you ever seen one of these? And if you saw one, would you know what it was and what's on it and how to use it? Well, that's what this video is about, so check this out. The first part of this section, you can find it in 130.5H. The very first section, if I can paraphrase it, it basically says that this label is required to be installed on the equipment if the equipment may be required to be serviced while it's in an energized state. I'm just going to leave it simple like that. So what that means is that if anybody ever has to work on it, where they can't shut it down or where they'll need to work on it energized, you know, because that's, uh, it's infeasible to do it, you know, with the power off, then this label has to be on the front of that. So that's what that first part is pointing to. Uh, right below that, it's going to get into the actual requirements of what's on the label. Looking at what those requirements are, there are basically three main things that we're going to talk about that are required for this label. Now, of those three things, the first one is the nominal voltage. Now, that nominal voltage is going to tell you what to expect inside that cabinet. Uh, something good to note is that, you know, if you have a tester that's good up to 600 volts or 1,000 volts, and that maybe that's what you're trained on, let's say this particular cabinet also has something in the you know 12,000 volt range in it well if you're not a qualified uh, person to work on that voltage then don't even open the cabinet so having that nominal voltage there it's going to give you that warning and you'll know what to expect the other thing that it does is it actually provides information for you to follow uh, your restricted and limited approach boundaries so you can go over to the table there and based on that nominal system voltage you can know well what is the appropriate restricted approach and what is my limited approach now you don't actually have to have those shock hazard 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 you don't actually have to have those shock hazard boundaries on the label um, you just have to have that nominal system voltage but in my opinion the best labels they also tell you what those boundaries are so that you don't have to go get the book out, right? Just keep it simple, put it right on the label. There's the system voltage, and here's the limited approach and restricted approach. They don't change, it should be easy. Um, if you're a qualified person, you should probably have those memorized for the stuff you work on, but it also doesn't cost anything to put it on the label. So I say they should be on the label, but it's not required. The second thing that's required on these labels is gonna be the arc flash boundary. Now the arc flash boundary, to, to state it you know, simply, is that it's the distance away from the arc source where the energy that comes out will not exceed 1.2 calories per square centimeter. So that label, the second thing on there will be that arc flash boundary. That's going to indicate to you that you or any, uh, anybody else on site, if they get closer to the arc source than that, they need to have PPE on or you need to have barricades or something in place to make sure they can't get closer than that. So that's the second thing on the label. Now the third thing on the label, this is going to talk about PPE. And when you read this section, it says it shall have at least one of the following. And the following is actually a list of three things. And of those three things, the first thing is made up of two options. And I, I think this could be uh, in a better format, but that's just what it shows, okay? So it asks for the incident energy and the corresponding distance from the arc source. In other words, your working distance. I have a video for that. So it either wants both of those on the label or the category in 130.715C, which uh, basically there are parameters for a situation that's gonna ask for available fault current, clearing time, the distance, the cabinet type. And if you fall within those parameters, it'll give you the PPE category, and then it'll also give you the uh, arc flash boundary. But all that we would need to provide from that table is the actual uh, category of PPE. Okay, look, I'm gonna interrupt my own video to tell you something important about the tables. Now, the tables are often misused. 
The reason why is because somebody will look at the table and it'll say, you know, a type of equipment, the voltage, and then it'll tell you the category. The thing is, is for them to do that, they overlooked the fact, the parameters where it says, you know, what the available fault current is, the clearing time and the working distance, whatever. And they're basically just guessing. Now, if the alternative for you or your company is to either use the table without that information or use no PPE at all, then please just, just use the table because that is better than nothing. However, you should be aware that those parameters do have to apply. So the proper use of the table would be an employer or a company that desires that simple category system and using the table is one way to just uh, round things off for category's sake. The thing is, is by the time you have the energy or the information that will properly apply the table, um, you can actually figure out what the incident energy is. And then you don't need the category system, you can just make sure that your PPE is rated for the actual incident energy. So that's why, uh, you know, you'll find that the category system, you know, that table is actually abused quite a bit. So if you see category on any of your stickers or somebody's telling you to wear a certain category PPE, you should probably be aware, is this being properly applied or are we guessing? That's it, it's either, our, it's either the working distance and the incident energy or the category from the table, but you can't do both. It's either one or the other. So that is one of your three options. So option two is putting the minimum arc rating that's required for your PPE on the label. I wish it had working distance as a requirement along with that, but it doesn't. And then finally option three, uh, is gonna be the site-specific PPE. So site-specific PPE is basically similar. It's gonna act the same way as the, um, as the category system, but it's something that an employer can designate themselves. Ultimately, the PPE that's being provided needs to protect you from the actual hazard that's present. So there are two exceptions to having the label on the equipment. The first one actually isn't an exception to having the label on the equipment, but basically what it says is if there's an old label and the system hasn't changed any, um, especially in a way that would affect the information on the label, then you don't need a new label. It, but it does have to be reviewed every five years. The second option, or the second exception rather, uh, has to do with the fact that you could have a very complicated system where when generators turn on, transfer switches flip, or you have tie breakers, multiple feeds into a building, that incident energy can change. So instead of plastering the switchboard with a bunch of different labels, um, you still have to have the information. It could be done in the form of an arc flash study, but it has to be documented and that is acceptable uh, in lieu of. All right, we're almost done. Right at the end here, it says that the method of calculating the data and the supporting information needs to be documented. This also needs to be reviewed every five years for accuracy to catch any changes. And if there are changes, then you need to get a new label with the proper information on it. And finally, the owner is the one that is ultimately responsible for documented installing and keeping the label up. That is all, and I hope you learned something today. Remember to like this post. If you have any questions, put it in the comments, and be safe out there. Thanks for watching.